All right, hey everybody. I'm going to talk today about Freemasonry and the Noahide Code. Basically, I was uh, reading this book here by Albert Mackey, The Symbolism of Freemasonry, written by a 33rd degree Freemason. So I'm going to go through this book, and then I'm going to look at what is a Noahide, and I'm going to trace it back to what that means for us today. So chapter one is the origin and progress of Freemasonry. All right, then he goes on to talk about the uh, two doctrines of Freemasonry, which are the unity of God and the immortality of the soul. Chapter two, the Noachide. These are the doctrines which still constitute the creed of Freemasonry, and hence one of the names bestowed upon the Freemasons from the earliest times was that of Noachide, or Noachites, that is to say the descendants of Noah and the transmitters of his religious dogmas. It doesn't say it came from Noah, it says the descendants of Noah. Let's see who those were. All right, so here's Noah's family tree, right? We got Noah up here on the upper left. Ham had a son, Cush. Cush had a son, Nimrod. Nimrod built the Tower of Babel. And they said to one another, go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Sounds like masonry, doesn't it? And his other son, Egypt. All right, this is Egypt. And another son, Canaan, the Canaanites. So the lineage of Ham were the enemies of God. But they are technically descendants of Noah. Freemasonry came from the descendants of Noah. So Ham was trying to bring back the pre-flood Nephilim kingdom. And then it says here, All the deities of pagan antiquity, however numerous they may be, can always be reduced to the two different forms of the generative principle, the active or male and the passive or female. Hence the gods were always arranged in pairs, as Jupiter and Juno, Bacchus and Venus, Osiris and Isis. But the ancients went further, believing that the procreative and productive powers of nature might be conceived to exist in the same individual. They made the older of their deities hermaphrodite, and used the term the man-virgin to denote the union of the two sexes in the same divine person. What's the unity of God? The male and the female combined into one body, their hermaphrodite God. Elsewhere, I have very fully alluded to the prevailing sentiment among the ancients that the supreme deity was bisexual or hermaphrodite, including in the essence of his being the male and female principles, the generative and prolific powers of nature. This was the universal doctrine in all the ancient religions. They all taught that God the Creator was both male and female. In Kabbalah, a hidden meaning is often deduced from a word by transposing or reversing its letters, and it was in this way that the Kabbalists concealed many of their mysteries. Lancey applied this Kabbalistic mode to the Tetragrammaton when he found out that I-H-O-H being read reversely makes the word Ho-Hai. So basically he's talking about reading the word backwards may reveal the true name of God. But in Hebrew, ho is the masculine pronoun equivalent to the English he, and hai is the feminine pronoun equivalent to she. And therefore, the word ho hai, literally translated, is equivalent to the English compound he, she. That is to say, the ineffable name of God in Hebrew, being read Kabbalistically, includes within itself the male and female principle. Uh, it's another pregnant proof of the connection between Freemasonry and the ancient mysteries. See right there, he's saying Freemasons believe that the true name of God is he, she, that God is a she-male. They're calling God a lady boy right here, all right? And here perhaps we may begin to find some meaning for the hitherto incomprehensible passage in Genesis. No, it's not incomprehensible. It's very simple. I will explain it. Genesis 1 is a broad overview of the entire week of creation creating everything. It's not a detailed focus on creating human beings, which we do get in chapter 2. All right, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. All right, you see that? God created him. Singular masculine pronoun. Who could that be? It could only be Adam. It can only refer to one person, and it's in the masculine form. And this is his, another masculine pronoun. And God is always called the Father, right? Even by Jesus, called the Father all the time. Okay, now there's a semicolon. There's a little pause there, right? Male and female created he. Now, does it say him? Is this a singular pronoun? 
No, it's not. It's a plural pronoun. Them is talking about more than one person. Well, who could that be? Well, maybe one male and one female, perhaps. Him referring to one person in the masculine. Them referring to two people, one male, one female, two people. Now, if this word here said him, we'd be in a lot of trouble, all right? But it says them, right? Male and female created he them. And this is not the complete story of the creation of Eve. We get that in chapter 2. God did not create Eve in his own image. God created Eve out of the raw materials of Adam. Created Adam in his own image. He created Eve, but it's just not in his own image. The all-seeing eye is another and a still more important symbol of the same great being. The symbol of universal nature among the Egyptians was the right-angled triangle, of which the perpendicular side represented Osiris, or the male principle, the base Isis, or the female principle, and the hypotenuse, their offspring Horus, or the world emanating from the union of both principles. So Horus is a tranny, all right? The eye of Horus is the symbol of the androgyne, which the Masonic institution assumed at the building of King Solomon's temple, in consequence of the union at that era of the pure Freemasonry of the Noahide. Okay, now there's these people here, the Noahides, right? From previous videos, we saw this represents the male and female combined into the androgynous god and the androgynous human. So they have seven laws, all right? Now, this is not Torah. This is what they call the Noahide seven laws that were given to Noah orally. Now, there was a covenant of the rainbow given to Noah, but this is not it. (laughs) They've, They've changed it. Included in this are the details of God's directive for all Gentiles to observe their seven Noahide commandments. It all begins with recognizing the perfect unity of the Creator. There we go. Unity, right? What does unity mean? Male and female combined. Modern Noahidism. Seven commandments, seven laws only, and remaining commandments do not apply to them. This means that Noahides may not observe Sabbath. Study Torah, except for the seven laws, which are not part of Torah, all right? And the rainbow is the modern symbol of Noahidism, all right? This is their symbol. We've seen that before, haven't we? We know who uses this symbol nowadays, right? Noahide website. Now, here's an article on gay marriage, but within this, now it's, they say that they're anti-gay marriage, although, you know, with their rainbow flag and all, I kind of doubt that. But within this article here, it says, in the first marriage ever, Adam and Eve were initially created as a single two-faced body. The single being was split in two, a man and a woman and then reunited in matrimony. In the world of souls, the partition and reunification of the male and female components of individual souls occurs continually. Celebrating diversity was was conceived as an opportunity to unite the world by re-echoing the belief in one God as a creator of all human beings and the belief that we are all created in the divine image. What's the divine image? The male and female hermaphrodite God. This is the true meaning of harnessing diversity among different cultures. This is the foundation for our organization's goal, which to work alongside the United Nations and other partner organizations with hopes of promoting human rights and development and protecting freedom of religion. Well, their religion, seven universal laws of Noah are means by which humanity strives to live in unity and peace. The laws of Noah, or the Noahide laws, are comprised of seven universal laws, biblical binding upon all humanity. In 1991, a joint resolution of the United States Congress called its principles the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization, without which the edifice of civilization stands in serious peril of returning to chaos. What is a Noahite? Definition. A Freemason who has taken the 21st degree of the Scottish Rite. Two. Freemason. Albert Mackey says Freemasons come from the Noahites. So basically the Congress said that Freemasonry is the bedrock of civilization. Okay, now this is from the uh, IsraelNationalNews.com. The Noahide Laws, a universal code for peace and unity. says here, 
all descendants of Noah, which means all of humanity, are required to follow these laws. Gentiles who actively follow the seven laws of Noah are called B'nai Noach, or Noahides. Sometimes they are referred to as righteous Gentiles, or the pious among the nations. The Noahide laws were given to Moses and also preserved by the sages of the Talmud. All right, now here's the Jewish Institute for Global Awareness. Government leaders encourage adherence to the seven Noahide laws. The universality of these principles and global import was recognized in 1982 by President Ronald Reagan when he spoke of the eternal validity of the seven Noahide laws as a moral code for all of us, regardless of religious faith. Proclamation on the National Day of Reflection, April 4th, 1982. Seven years later, 1989, H.W. not only proclaimed that these biblical values, they're not biblical, all right? Freemasonic values are the foundation for civilized society. A society that fails to recognize or adhere to them cannot endure. And it's, you think these people are clever, right? Because we all, we're all descendants of Noah. So they're, they're saying that the entire world has to follow the laws given to Noah since we're all descendants of, of Noah, right? So legally, we're all bound to this law. Both the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States Congress in 1991 on a bipartisan basis further recognize how this historical tradition of ethical values and principles of Freemasonry upon which our great nation was founded. All right, there it is right there. United States Congress admitted that the United States was founded on the principles of Freemasonry. All right have been the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization when they were known as the seven Noahide laws. The American Congress understood how the most recent weakening of these principles has resulted in crisis that beleaguer and threaten the fabric of civilized society. Thus, they warned us that without these ethical values and principles, the edifice of civilization, civilization, oh, like the Tower of Babel? Yeah, that was a pretty good one, huh? stands in serious peril. How about the pre-flood Nephilim kingdom, huh? That turned out pretty well for you guys, didn't it? Yeah. Serious peril of returning to chaos. Returning to chaos. Other world leaders have joined the call for further observance of knowledge of Freemasonry. For example, Herman Van Rumpy, president of the European Union, wrote in July 2014 that he seeks greater dissemination of the universal values known as Freemasonry. And Major General Michael Jeffrey, Governor General of Australia, lamenting family breakdowns and drug and alcohol abuse in modern society in 2008, letter wrote that he believed that observing the fundamental values of the Noahide laws can be an antidote to such ills of society. <laughs> you got a drug problem? Freemasonry. Here's your new big book. Prohibition of idolatry. Well, you might say, well, that sounds just like the Bible. Well, it kind of does sound like the Bible, right? The problem is that the Jews believe Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, is an idol. They're going to call that idolatry. And idolatry is punishable by death. All Breaking any of these laws is the death penalty. This is the New World Order religion. Right here, seven. Create a fair and righteous judicial system to enforce the other six laws and all other laws consistent with them. Idolatry. Worshipping false gods. The Hebrew term for idolatry, whatever, means strange worship in the sense of being outside the boundaries of that which is permitted by denying pure monotheism. The worship of anything other than God constitutes an act of idolatry. This includes deifying any object other than God, including a deification of the human being. Right? But they're going to include Jesus in this, right? President Bush Roadmap to World Peace. Press release. President George Bush confers with Noahide.org to discuss the importance of seven universal Noahide laws. Among the religious leaders was Rabbi Dr. Yaakov Cohen from Melbourne, Australia, who represented the Worldwide Institute of Noahide Code, an organization dedicated to promote the Noahide Code of seven universal laws. Rabbi Cohen presented the roadmap to world peace, explaining that the Noahide laws can unite all of mankind. When humanity is unified, when humanity becomes androgynous, hermaphrodite, by its highest common denominator, genuine peace and harmony will flourish throughout the world. Okay, now this is George Bush, George H.W. Bush, 
writing in 1989. The principles of moral and ethical conduct that have formed the basis for all civilizations come to us in part from the centuries-old seven Noahide laws, otherwise known as Freemasonry. They basically passed some kind of resolution to designate these two days as Education Day USA. They also, in doing that, they officially pronounced Freemasonry as the foundation of the universal law for humanity. That's official law in the United States is Freemasonry. That's kind of covertly what they did. And now there's all kinds of, you know, conspiracy websites and stuff. So you got Talmudic law has infiltrated America. The judicial <laughs> the judicial system is a criminal conspiracy. All non-Jews be, beware. They're going to use this to bring back the guillotine. Part of uh, the laws of the Noahides are... If you break the seven laws, death by beheading with a guillotine. Moses, our teacher, was commanded by the Almighty to compel the world to accept the commandments of the sons of Noah. Anyone who fails to accept them is executed. Whereas the justified preoccupation with these crises must not let the citizens of this nation lose sight of their responsibility to transmit these historical ethical values from our distinguished past to the generations of the future. So 1991 the year in which we turn to education and charity to return the world to the moral and ethical values contained in the seven Noahide laws. Freemasonry. And this will be reflected in an international scroll of honor signed by the President of the United States and other heads of state. And think about 1991, right? This is the year H.W. was giving those New World Order speeches, all right? Let's listen to what he has to say. What is at stake? is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. The law. He was talking about exactly what it says here, returning the world to the law of the Noahides, making Freemasonry the law of the entire world. The alchemist's great work. In alchemy, the great work is producing the perfect androgyne, or mankind restored to wholeness. I'm going to start beheading people who have the witness of Jesus and the word of God. Everyone else is going to become a tranny. God's going to set this world on fire. God's going to set this world on fire. God's going to set this world on fire. Devil's going to burn as the flames get high. Set this world on fire